In this video, I'm going to go and demonstrate how to create the leg in SolidWorks. I still want you to be able to make this on your own, but to help those that are struggling with making this leg in SolidWorks, because it is fairly complicated uh, for the stage that you're in right now, I'm going to go through it from start to finish, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to see kind of how I would do it and pick something up from it. So here's the leg. That's the drawing that we're going to be using. Let's go over to SolidWorks to start it out. So I'm going to start my part. In this case, this is a single feature part. So I'm going to go to my front plane, sketch on my front plane, and draw some lines. So now this leg, I'm not going to do the whole thing all at once. It's There's too many moving parts, and if I put it all in there at once, it, the geometry gets all weird. So I'm going to start with it in a couple different steps. There's basically going to be two main steps that I'm going to go through. First, I'm going to start with everything but the arm, the the, the curved leg, or curved uh, clip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by coming over here, and I'm going to draw a line coming down, and then I'm going to draw a line coming over, and go up. Now see, now one of the things that you'll see is as we move around, there are constraints that can be put together. Well, in this case, this is a perpendicularity constraint with the line that I'm going to create and that first line that I put in. In this case, if we look at the drawing, those should be perpendicular, although it doesn't say that on the drawing, but based on the dimensions and everything, those should be perpendic perpendicular. So I'm going to keep that constraint in there and just draw this around. And again, all these lines should be perpendicular to each other. The only thing I don't want is that horizontal relationship. I don't want that to be put in there. So I want to make sure that I don't click when it's adding a horizontal uh, uh, relationship. So I'm going to make sure that's off. But I do want my perpendicular. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to add my perpendicular relationship uh, without any other relationship. That's the shape I want to start with. That's kind of the, 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 the initial design shape. Now, one of the things that we don't have on here is any dimensions. All I have is a shape. And if I take a look at the length of this line, it shows that the length of this line is 9 inches. Well, one of the things that I can do in SolidWorks, it's kind of neat, is that before I put any dimensions on here, um, I can actually, the whole thing will scale. So in this case, I don't know the length of this line because I don't have the two fillets in on the left and the right side yet. But what I can do is I can add a dimension to this line. And instead of making it 9 inches, I'm going to make it closer to what I want. So I know the dimension on the drawing is 1.75. This is not exactly that dimension. I'm going to put in 2.5, which will get us close to the shape and the size of our object. So I'm going to hit Enter. And you can see that nothing changed other than our dimension. But it didn't just change the length of that line, it changed the length of everything. So it scaled it all down, so now I am now I have my drawing, so it's at least roughly what I want it to be. So I'm going to leave that, um, that dimension, or at least with that dimension in there, now I can go in and start adding some of our fillets in. That's my next step. So I'm going to hit Escape, go over to our Sketch Fillet, click on that, under fillet parameters, I'm going to put my dimension, which is our 0.125, and then hit enter. Now I'm going to go through and put a couple fillets in. One is on the left-hand side, the other one on the right-hand side, and then the other is up at the top of that, that uh, lip. So I have those three. That's all I want to put in at this point. I'm going to say OK. Now I have our shape. It's a little bit closer to what we want. Now, at this point, I'm going to want to start adding dimensions so I can get it to be more um, exact of per the drawing. So, what I'm going to do, hit escape, I'm going to delete off our two and a half inch dimension that we added in there because it's really not part of the part. It was just used to help set up the part. So, I'm going to hit select it, press delete. 
Now I'm going to start adding some dimensions as per the drawing. So the first dimension I'm going to add is our 1.75, which is from the center of the arc to the center of the uh, arc on the right-hand side. Now I'm going to select the circumference or the outer arc and I'm going to select the outer arc. You can sometimes select the center points of the arcs. Sometimes you have problems with that, but if you choose at least the arcs, then it knows exactly that it's that that uh, it's going to go to the center. So in this case, we can plug this dimension down or click it down, and I'm going to set this to 1.75. And now I'm going to continue on. So I'm going to make the angle between the bottom and the front we had that set and I want that to be 70 degrees. The next one is our 0.886. Our 886 dimension goes from this top straight line down to the center of our arc. And again, I'm going to select on the arc, not the center point. And I have that dimension. Click it down, 0.886. Enter. Now I have the half inch dimension, which is the length of this line right here. Well, the length of that line, if I have all my perpendicularity constraints in there, I should just be able to select on that line, bring it over, make sure I'm not doing a vertical dimension or a horizontal dimension, but the actual length of that line. And I'm going to set that to be 0.5. So let's see here. I think I've got all of our dimensions up to this point that uh, we need. So this is good. So we're, we have that basic shape. We have the correct shape. We have the correct dimension. So now the next thing we're going to do is start working on that curved leg or the curved finger there. Now, the way that's made up, it's made up of two arcs that are concentric. That means the center point of those arcs are coincident or the same point. So what we're going to do is we're going to make two circles and we're going to start with that. So uh, first I'm going to click on my circle and I'm going to come over here and uh, add two circles in. Now I don't want any constraints on this or any unwanted constraints. So I want to make sure I'm not getting lined up right above any of these snap points, anything like this. So again, the center point is going to be where there's no constraints. Click and I'm going to drag this. Again, I'd want to drag it so that there's no constraints. And if it, the dimensions aren't right or they don't look right, that's not a problem. We're going to fix all that in a little bit. We're just looking at design intent right now. So first one, I'm going to click that one down. Uh, so I got the first circle. Now if I make the second circle, if I hover over the center point, I get that yellow double circle. That is a concentric constraint. That means that those two points are going to remain the same. So I'm going to click that one, and now I'm going to drag my other circle out. And again, I don't want it to snap to any of these other constraints. So that one's huge, but it's okay because I don't care how big it is. I'm going to add a dimension to it in just a moment. So there's our two circles. Now, again, it's not in the right spot. They're not the right dimensions, but they are constrained together in the way that I want them to be constrained together. So now I'm going to add some dimensions. So let's make them the right dimension. So this inner circle is has a, it comes up and shows the diameter. Well, if we look at our, uh, our drawing, it shows it as a radius. So it says a radius of 0.25. Well, in this, I have a diameter, so I need to double it. So I can do a couple things. One is I can type in 0.5, which is 2 times 0.25, or I can type in 0.25 times 2. Let SolidWorks do the math for us if you want to do it that way. So I can hit Enter. It's going to put the correct dimension in there, and I can hit Enter again, and we're all set. Now I'm going to dimension the outer circle. Again, here I want to get this... All right, I, I want the, there we go, right like that. Now, again, that has a radius of 0.375. Again, I can type in 0.75, or I can just type in 0.375 times 2. Let SolidWorks do the math for me. Hit Enter. Now I have those two circles um, that are concentric and the right dimension. Now I need to start to locate them in the right location. Now, if we look at, this circ at the, the drawing, the, the way that we need to constrain the circle, these, these circles are, is 
this bottom line right here is going to be tangent to our inner circle. So to make those tangent, I'm not going to move it there. I'm going to have SOLIDWORKS move it, and I'm going to put in a constraint. So I'm going to hit the down arrow, say add relation, and now I'm going to select my straight line and my inner circle. And if you look over in the left-hand box over here, it shows the arc, it shows a line, it shows a dimension too. I don't need that dimension, so I'm going to select on it in my selected entities and delete it. And then I'm going to click on the tangent box. Tangent, now you can see it has moved our uh, circle all the way down. The other dimension that we need is our 0.555 dimension, which goes from this straight line here to the center of that circle. So again, I'm going to smart dimension from this line to that circle. And now I'm going to click that down and I'm going to see I have 0.555 as my dimension. Now I have it located in the right spot. So now my geometry is starting to come together. I'm still missing a couple things, and um, but uh, we'll get to that in just a moment. First thing I want to do is I'm going to extend this line all the way to my circle. Now we'll, I need to extend it there, and then I need to extend this line all the way to my circle also. And since I know they're tangent, they will intersect. So I'm going to use the extend entities um, option, which is under the trim entities. So click the down arrow, extend entities. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over the line that I want to extend. And it will give me a little preview. And you can see that there's a line that has extended out to our circle. I'm just going to click that and it is going to accept it. And you can see that it's uh, added a coincidence. So the end of that line is now coincident onto that circle. We're going to do the same thing down over here. Extend that line so they touch. I want to make sure that those are touching. So I'm getting closer. I'm starting to get some more information or get uh, closer to my drawing. Now I need to add the end of this, uh, the end of that uh, finger on there. And that's going to be a circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, uh, it's, it's an arc, but we're going to create it by using a circle. Now I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here. Now what I want to do is put the circle in here, but I don't want any other constraints. So I want to make sure I'm not having any of these snapping going on. So I'm just going to click the center of the circle and I'm going to drag it out. Just if I drag to this one circle, it adds a tangent relationship. That is what I want. I want that to be those two circles to be tangent. So in this case, I'm going to just put that down right there. Well, the other on the other side, we want that circle to be tangent to our inner circle here. So we're going to add a relationship. I'm going to hit escape, go up, add relation. I'm going to select my small circle, and then I'm going to select my larger inner circle, or the, the smaller inner circle here. And those two I want to be tangent. I'm going to select my relationship of tangent, and it will automatically get in there. We don't need to know the dimension because that is going to be tangent to both of those. So then we can say OK. Now if we hit Escape, now we have a bunch of geometry here that is everything that we need to do, but we've got extra lines, so we need to trim this out. So we're going to go up to Trim Entities. By default, Power Trim is the one that is selected. We are going to use Power Trim. So Power Trim, we want to get rid of this bottom edge of this, of this larger circle. And when I use Power Trim, again, I click and drag. So I go away from the object that I want to trim. I'm going to click, and then I'm going to drag across the, the section of that line that I want to remove. So I can click and drag across there. I have this little section right here that I want to get rid of. So I'm going to click and drag across it and this other one. So I'm going to click and drag as long as those lines are touching the circle or intersecting the circle, it'll trim it out. Oh, I'm missing one more here. This inner circle, I need to get rid of this part on that side. So click and drag. Now I've got that all set. So now I have all of my geometry. I'm only missing one thing here, which if I hit escape, I need to add in another fillet. It has my dimension of 0.125 already in there. And it's this edge. Click on that corner. It gives us a fillet. I'm going to say OK. 
now I've got my geometry there. Now, if we take a look at our geometry, it is not all black. We have blue lines, which means that it's underdefined. And in reality, I think I've got most of the dimensions on here. I'm missing a couple, so let's go add those in. So I'm missing the 0 0.163, which is from this bottom edge to the center of that arc. So I'm going to put that on there. That's 0.163. Let's see, which other ones? I've got those, i got that. Um, oh, the other thing, I'm gonna do this right now. I noticed that I'm in all two dimension, two decimal place uh, for my display. I'm gonna go through and change that right now. So again, I go up to SolidWorks, Tools, all the way down to Options, Document Properties at the top, Units, base units length go over to where it says decimals it says 0.12 click on that click the down arrow 0.123 and say okay and that takes care and now we have all of our three decimal places so we can see that they match up with what we have on the drawing so let's see here i've got all those dimensions that dimension Oh, let's see, I'm missing this one. So I'm missing our 0.3 dimension between here and there. And that should be 0.3. Enter. Then we've got that. Those, those, those. So I think we're pretty much, I have all the right dimensions, but it still is not black. So what is the problem is, is that it's sitting in space and it's not tied down. So we're going to uh, put a relationship in, add a relationship from the origin to this point right here. You can really pick any point. I'm gonna pick that point. And when I add that relationship, let's see, it didn't add the relationship. Let's try this one more time. Oops, now I gotta go back into my sketch. Yeah, let's add that relationship. So from the origin to that point, and we are gonna make that coincident. And then I'm gonna say, okay, and if I zoom out, and now I look at my shape, everything is black, it is constrained in space, I have all the dimensions, it is fully defined. At this point, we can then exit our sketch, select our sketch, go to our features, extrude boss space, type in our 0.25 for our depth, say okay. Now we have our leg, hit escape, deselect everything. And if we look at our front view, now we can save it out, and now we can save it as a DXF to export it into our Corel Draw. Hopefully that helps.